How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a very special podcast right here at No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast, and it is labeled Kyle Masters Top 10 List. Guys, we are your Canadian wrestling podcast that talks about the WWE and NXT and No Holds Barred on anything we say, pun intended. Guys, you can follow the podcast on Twitter at No Holds Barred WP. You can also follow myself at Real Kyle Masters or my co-host at Corporate Cappy on Twitter as well. We are also available to follow on Instagram, No Holds Barred WP, all one word. If you want to listen to us on the go, we are available on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, and Spreaker. Spreaker is a glorious podcast app that is available for all Apple and Android devices. It's free to download, free to make a profile. You can follow us on there and listen to us live. Chat with us live on the air whenever we do live podcasts, and you can listen to all previous episodes of the podcast. We have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash NHBWR, where you can watch any video versions of the podcast, unboxings, and 2K content. All that is available on there. Hit that subscribe button and that bell icon for all notifications. I'm your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host of this special episode, as you can see in the video version of this podcast, it is labeled Kyle Masters uh, Top 10 List, so Cobra Copy won't be doing this with me, it's just myself. Uh, he might do one of his uh, on his own too, which I'll post on the channel too if he decides to do one. Basically guys, it is what it is, it's my SmackDown Top 10 List and who I think should be in the SmackDown Live uh, Top 10. And I know it sucks because literally like two days after they they came out with this, um, this Top 10 List, it literally has gone down the garbage chute because now Shane McMahon comes out and books uh, Dolph Ziggler versus Baron Corbin and the winner gets added to the Fatal 4-Way yet none of them are on the top 10 list which it's supposed to be used to give opportunity to people that are on that list so I don't know it's not really making sense so I'm going to give my uh, my reasons behind each one and who I think should be in the top 10 um, if you guys are watching the video version of this podcast, I'll have a little graphics for you on there. Um, if you are listening in, uh, I guess all I can do is tell you to listen carefully, or if you do want to go back and rewatch a video version, uh, it'll be posted on YouTube at the same time as this. So you can go back and check that. If not, listen carefully. I'm going to go over each one and why they deserve to be in that spot. So if you're watching the video version of this podcast, I'll transition it, transition it for you right there. As you can see on the right hand side of the page, you got one to ten there, and I'm going to go over each one and you get the beautiful logo I drew up down below. Kyle Masters top ten list. Um, so we're going to the first one. The first one's very very obvious. Um, it, it, it's what WWE has in their number one, and and that is AJ Styles, the WWE champion. He's had a really good. Uh, start to 2018 so far an even better end to 2017 coming in as a WWE champion um, you see what he's done with the WWE title ever since he's winning it and it's just kind of boosted Smackdown Live ever since he's been taking it off Jinder Mahal he's having great feuds with Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn and kind of like an almost like an authority figure role with uh, Shane McMahon Daniel Bryan something going on there and he's also set to face Shinsuke Nakamura at WrestleMania 34 which I really hope they stick to that match I really hope they don't go uh, anywhere different. Let me just adjust the camera here. There we go. Uh, I don't. I wish. I, I really hope they don't go anywhere different with this. That's got to be the match to be at WrestleMania 34. So AJ Styles fitting at number one does make sense. So we're going to keep him there. Um, and he he's going to ride that spot for a while unless someone can dethrone him because right now AJ Styles is literally the best thing on SmackDown Live. Like he he pronounces he is. The he this is the house that AJ Styles built, and it's true. Since SmackDown Live first came back as a live show with its own roster, AJ Styles has been that guy. So it's only fitting to keep him at number one. Um, the number two spot, and this is someone that didn't make the actual SmackDown Live top ten list, and I wonder why because he's getting very very over right now with like a simple catchphrase, and I don't know why he's not included on there. I would include on there. I'm going to put him at number two, and I think a lot of you guys out there would probably agree. I'm putting Rusev or Rusev Day at number two on my SmackDown Live tag t- or top ten list. Um, it's only deserving. The guy literally took Rusev Day and made it the most over thing in Dirty B right now. Besides the yes chant, Rusev Day is being chanted everywhere. It's going to casual towns, and it's being chanted Heavily and loudly. You know when casual Centralville, wherever USA or wherever they go, maybe sometimes in Canada, that Rusev Day is going to get over. And it's been getting over. So I think it only deserves that he gets a title opportunity. you got to ride with whatever's over right now. And 
I'm sticking him at number two. A lot of people would argue and probably put Shinsuke Nakamura because it would make more sense because he is the number one contender. But, I mean, he won the the, the Royal Rumble, and I'll show you where I have him in my top ten. But as of right now, the, the leading guy that deserves an opportunity is Rusev. He took a, a nothing catchphrase and made it the most over thing now. He's probably the leading merchandise seller with the Rusev Day t-shirt, which is probably sold out for the next month, I'm assuming. Same with the calendar, like the hilarious calendar. So... That's the only reasons why I put him at number two. It just it's been over for a while now. Nakamura just won the Royal Rumble, so I'll get into that when I get to Nakamura spot. But at number two, I think deservingly is Rusev. So I hopefully they kind of see that in the next list. Whenever they they haven't really come out and said when this next list is going to be posted or when they're going to do it. I don't know if they're going to do it monthly. Uh, I might have missed that. Uh, but anyways, um, Rusev deserves to be in it for sure. So I have him at number two in uh, my list. So at number three, I'm going to put Owens and Sami Zayn. Again, another two people that weren't put in the real top ten list for whatever reason. I mean, they're the main challengers for the WWE title. Why are they not in your top ten list? I don't get it. If they're the main, ch- if they're not in your top ten list, why are they challenging for the WWE title? I don't get it. So I stuck Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn at number three. Um, what they've done since becoming a team as well is probably the best heel work ever. Sammy, no one knew what Sami Zayn really would be as a heel in WWE and how they would transition him to a heel. And ever since that Hell in a Cell match, he's done a great job with Kevin Owens. Like These guys have become the new Jericho and Owens. And a lot of people are going to be uh, upset when they finally break up. I think hey, I'd be upset too. I mean, anyone it's like anyone that Kevin Owens works with and he fans get behind, and then they split up, and then you get pissed off. But it is what it is. That started to be. Um, but again, Owens and Zayn, what they've done in getting these title opportunities, a lot of people would argue that Daniel Bryan is favoring them. But if you look at it from the outside, it's not really. They're kind of the only other top people on SmackDown besides Nakamura winning the the Royal Rumble now to be in the title picture. So. I have them at number three just because of where they're at right now with the WWE Championship picture and what they've done to get there and how they're defying uh, Shane McMahon and what they're, they're doing these little like snake tricks to get around and getting these WWE title opportunities. So deserving so, they should be at number three in the top ten list. So at number four, and this is where I think a lot of people are going to argue maybe Nakamura should be a little higher, but... I have the Usos at number four because they are literally the best tag team in the WWE, and I think they deserve a high number. I know Nakamura won the Royal Rumble um, and probably deserves to have a higher number as well, but I just the Usos have been doing well for a longer time. Same with Owens and Zayn. They've been doing well longer than Nakamura has, and that's not I mean it's not his fault. That's the WWE's booking's fault, but I think the Usos deserve to be at number four here. Um Literally the best, again, like I said, the best tag team in WWE. Their promo work has been awesome. Like the, this this past Tuesday's promo uh, was probably the best promo I've seen them ever do. That was great besides their uh, promos against the New Day and all that stuff. Um, the Usos are just so good right now and so hot. So I think they deserve to be in the top five, at least of the top ten list. Um, I think they, they'll be here for a while unless someone can dethrone them again like AJ Styles. So unless someone's going to come around and dethrone the Usos, they're going to be in that top five position for a while because they're the best thing going they the wrestling is great the the promo work is great these guys are just like the complete package and ever since them turning heels well it's been amazing uh you, you remember like the usos the old usos and the baby faces like they weren't really that over with the crowd they were at one point and it kind of died off usos ever since being heel have never died off they've been going up the ladder they've been going down so putting them at number four i think is a de- deserving spot in this case and the WWE tag team champions hitting at number four here um Number five, when I can transition here, I clicked the wrong one. There we go. So number five is where I have Shinsuke Nakamura. Obviously, he's got to be at least in the top five. I don't think I was going to put him anywhere below it. So I gave him the number five spot. Him winning the Rumble, huge, huge, huge thing uh, for his career. Um, a lot of people, and it's one thing a lot of people in there to be, and you fans out there, uh, including me, wanted to happen, and I congratulate Derby for actually doing the right thing for once and not giving us a Royal Rumble winner that we wanted to rip our eyes out of our sockets for. Um, so we got Nakamura winning the Royal Rumble, being the number one contender for the Derby title. It looks like they're pushing him in a better role than he has been in 2017. 2017 in his debut was really like a letdown. They put him in a terrible feud with Jinder Mahal that really did nothing for Nakamura and basically killed his vibe and did this thing with him teaming with Randy Orton and just it was just 
it was god awful. So it looks like they're going in the right direction now with the the AJ Styles Nakamura dream match at WrestleMania. And because he's that number one contender from winning the Royal Rumble, he deserves to be in that top five spot. And he's uh, solidified himself as a top contender on SmackDown Live. So I gave him the number five spot. Um, as for the number six spot, I gave. Oops, let's get down the head too much here. I gave it to Sh- uh, Charlotte, which if I can transition to here. Oh, LBS was uh, being a little screwy there for me. Anyways, uh, Charlotte is my number six spot, uh, women's champion on SmackDown. Basically, the only thing that's going for the women's division on SmackDown, let's be honest, is that besides her and the in the Riot Squad, what else is going on in SmackDown right now? They're doing nothing with the money in the bank winner. They had that small tease of her teasing in, which was actually cool. I love that they did that and finally doing something with uh, Carmella actually had a friend of mine tell me that they think that Carmella is going to be holding on to that briefcase briefcase all the way to Money in the Bank and it's going to actually expire. I hope that is not the case. I hope maybe they actually have her cash in because if you're just going to let it expire, like what was the point, right? Like uh, to me, I, I don't know. It's not a good idea that I would go behind, but I can actually see them doing something like that. But I have Charlotte number six, literally the only dominant woman right now on SmackDown or doing anything. So she's got to be included in this top 10 list and, I, I put her at number six. Um, I, I, I would love to put her higher, but it just the other ones made sense to me. So you guys can tell me out there where you think you put Charlotte, but I have her at the number six spot. Um, number seven is an interesting one. I was actually shocked that they're not in the, the top ten in real life. A lot of people would argue that because they haven't got as much television time. They've only been crushing local jobbers. But I have the Bludgeon Brothers at number seven because I think they're going to be the front runners and the next number one contenders for the Usos Tag Team Championships, and I think that's going to actually be a really, really good feud. Uh, obviously, we know the wrestling backgrounds of both Eric Rowan and Luke Harper. They can still put up a good match in the ring with each other, and especially Luke Harper more than Eric Rowan. And now with this new Bludgeon Brothers gimmick, it's actually really, really good. It's probably the best gimmick that they've ever done. These guys have been retooled and repackaged so many times over the last two years. It looks like they finally found something that they're going to stick with, and that WWE actually likes because they're putting it more and more on television, especially that they're showing the in a two-hour show. They usually cut a lot of entrances. They're never cutting the Bludgeon Brothers entrance. They literally, from start to finish, they've been watching these guys. So... And I love the stare downs with the Usos too, so that's why I'm saying these guys are going to be the next number one contenders. So for them being the next number one contenders, we got to include them in the top ten list, right? So I have them at the number seven spot. I think that's actually a pretty good spot. Although I'd love to see them start crushing uh, other actual main roster talent now. If they're leading up to this Usos match, maybe face a uh, Ascension or face a uh, Fashion Police or face uh, Gable and Benjamin. You know. Kill someone that's more credible than local jobbers for me to keep them in that top 10 list. So I really hope that happens. But I have the Bludgeon Brothers at number 7. You guys let me know what you guys think out there and who, where, if you would put the Bludgeon Brothers in the top 10 list. Number 8, I have Bobby Roode. It sucks because I would, a lot of people would probably have him higher. I don't because I don't like, I think I spelled Bobby Roode wrong actually. <laughs> uh, I was tired of making these graphics, guys. So if I spelled the wrong, uh, I apologize. Um, a lot of people would have him higher. I, I, to me, I wouldn't because ever since he's won that U.S. title, nothing's really come out of it. They did a really terrible job with the whole Dolph Ziggler thing, and I hope. And a lot of podcasters I've listened to have said that I hope that Ziggler actually comes out this Tuesday and says why he left and gives us a reason, or else it's literally for nothing. Um, I hope that Bobby Roode does something more with this U.S. title because right now it's kind of getting bland and dry. That's why I only have him at the 8 spot and not anything higher. I mean, he hasn't really done anything right now to stick out. He beat Mojo Raleigh. Like, it's just nothing's, like, sticking out for me that to, to put him higher on this top 10 list. So, um, I put Bobby Roode number 8 just because he's U.S. champion. And it, it's, it's you know, it, it gets people. There's the casual people that love the Bobby Roode thing. And, then you know, the, we have us that love Bobby Roode still. I kind of wish he was still a heel. I, I I love heel Bobby Roode more than this baby face crap. I couldn't get behind it. Uh, although it, it doesn't take anything away with how I feel about Bobby Roode. Um, I think that he could just do a better job with that U.S. title if he was a heel. And then you can have actually better matches with a lot of the baby face mid Carter. So Bobby Roode for being U.S. champion and, you know, keep sticking to this winning streak, I guess you can call it, with the U.S. title. Putting him at number eight in my top ten list. Um as for the number nine, a lot of people probably argue with me over this, but you know I think it's a good idea because it's literally 
it's what's keeping the women's division somewhat relevant on SmackDown. You know, it's really not relevant, but I have the, actually the Riot squad in general, like all three of them at number nine. Um, this thing what they're doing with Charlotte, like the beatdowns and stuff, and, Riot, and Charlotte going through them all, it looks like it's eventually going to lead to a uh, uh, Ruby Riot versus Charlotte title match at Fastlane, which is okay with me. But, I mean, if you're going to heavily push Riot squad in the Charlotte storyline, you're going to need to have them in this top 10 list. Again, you if you you have to have the number one contenders in the top 10 list. I think that's actually a good idea because then you, it shows that they deserve to be the number one contenders. You can't just have the number one contenders just not sit in the top 10 list. It, just, it doesn't make sense to me. So I have the Riot Squad people at number nine. I think that's a perfect place for them. Not too far up the ladder, but just in there that they are a solidified number one contender for that women's title. And the work that they're doing with Charlotte is a pretty good storyline, I must say. I mean, they're not really doing anything else, so at least it's something. Um, as for the 10 spot, I actually went with what Derby had at number 10. And I just wish they'd do something with them, which this is where it, the real top 10 list on SmackDown doesn't make sense. You have Ty Dillinger at the fitting 10. So, pun, you know, I'm wearing the t-shirt in the video version if you're watching. You have Ty Dillinger at number 10. Now, you come out two days later and announce that... Shane comes out and announces that Baron Corbin, for whatever fucking reason, and Dolph Ziggler, for whatever reason, are going to face each other in a number one contenders match. And the winner... Or not a number one contenders match, but a match that the winner is going to be added to the WWE title match. And it'll be made a fatal four-way. But then you have Ty Dillinger in your number 10 spot in the top 10 list. And you're not going to put him in that match? How does that make any sense? You don't see Baron Corbin in the real list. You don't see Dolph Ziggler in the real list. So why the fuck would you put those two together in a match to be put in a WWE title shot? Not just a mid-card title. The WWE title. How does that make any sense? That's bullshit. To me, it probably should have been Ziggler against Ty Dillinger number or one-on-one. Or made that a triple threat match. And the winner of that goes on to the WWE title match. And that's when you should have put... You know, you, you're not going to have Ty Dillinger win the WWE title at Fastlane. But it, it creates something for him because he's not being used on television right now. And you put him in that WWE title match at Fastlane. You know he's not going to win. But it adds something to the match because you're going to do a fatal four-way no matter what. So how about you ask someone someone that actually makes more sense than Dolph Ziggler or Baron Corbin who be doing fuck all. I mean, I know Ty Dillinger's been doing nothing, but he's been voted on by the locker room to be in the top 10 list and deserve an opportunity, yet you're not going to give him the opportunity. It doesn't make sense. And this goes back to the rumored report that Ty Dillon, they don't want Ty Dillinger to be over with this 10 thing. They want the, ch- the fans to stop chanting 10 whenever the ref counts. Like, are they just trying to suck the fun out of everything in a WWE show? You you go to the show to have fun. You, you do goon shit like count 10 with the ref or you yell one fall after the announcer says one fall. Like, wh- why are they taking all the fun out of going to a WWE show? I don't understand this. N- N- Vince McMahon, the guy of all people that comes out and says, oh, I'm going to make the XFL fun and stuff. Why don't you make your own product fun? You say you claim that the WWE product's f- all fun and it's less serious and less attitudinal like it used to be. But then you come out and you, you try to ruin shit for the fans. You say it's all about the fans. Yet you, you ruin anything that's fun for them to do at a live event or even at a televised event. It doesn't make sense. So I keep Ty Dillinger at number 10 because I think it deserves to get at least a push. He has a gimmick that's over finally in his career. The, the, his, his long career, he finally found something that was over and it got really, really over in NXT. And then they brought it to the main roster. They don't like it that it's over. Isn't that the main purpose on being on the WWE main roster is to get over with the fans so that they can push you for a reason. Yet now he's getting over with the fans now that he's not getting pushed. How does that make sense? I, dude, we're not stupid out here, WWE. We can see it. We see it more clear than you think we do. They just they just think that we're all casuals and we'll fucking forget about it the next day. But we don't. Just a heads up. We don't. So I have Ty Dillinger number 10, as you can see on the screen, and I'll uh, reiterate for the people listening uh, on the go with this podcast. Uh, AJ Styles, my number one, Rusev and Rusev Day, uh, my number two, which should be fitting. Got Owens and Zayn at number three, uh, Usos at number four, Nakamura at number five, Charlotte at number six, the Bludgeon Brothers at number seven. Bobby Roode at number 8. I apologize for spelling it wrong in the video version. I know you guys are going to give me gripe about that. Uh, number 9, Riot Squad. A number 10, the perfect 10. 
Ty Dillinger. Guys, let me know who you would put in your top 10 list. I'm actually really curious in how you guys out there would do it. You can tweet at me at Real Kyle Masters, or you can tweet at the podcast at No Holds Bar WP. Or if you want to drop a comment on the YouTube version of the podcast down below with your top 10 list, I would really like to know, and I will respond back to you in those comments uh, if you do drop a comment. I really want to know what you guys think out there. So let us know, guys, and uh, also share this video on Twitter when I put it up there. Um, like, retweet it. Um, Subscribe to the podcast on YouTube, youtube.com slash NHBWR. Guys, you can go listen to us on Spreaker, iTunes, and Stitcher Radio. Um, but as for that, that is going to wrap it up, guys. That is my uh, top 10 list right here on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast, your Canadian wrestling podcast that talks about the WWE and NXT and No Holds Barred on anything we say, pun intended. Again, guys, you can follow myself at Real Kyle Masters, the podcast at No Holds Barred WP. We're available on Instagram iTunes, Stitcher Radio, Spreaker, and YouTube. We're available everywhere. All the links will be down in the video in the description below. If you're watching us on YouTube, or if you're listening in, thanks for listening in on today's episode. I'm Kyle Masters, ladies and gentlemen. I'll see you next time.